to the third in the series of Project Kickstart tutorials. Here, we'll learn how to assign people to a project's task and how to organize a project's task list. We take up our story here, in the Assign step, where we see the tasks that were developed in the Planning Wizard, here on the left, and the names of the project's team members that were entered in the People step, here on the right. The instructions at the top of the page tell us that we can assign people to phases or tasks. However, it's generally a good idea to assign people to tasks rather than phases because if a task gets moved to a different phase, the people assigned to the task will move with it. To assign people, simply highlight the task, as we've done here with the first task, Create Online Tutorial Topics, and then click on the resource. A check mark will appear to confirm the assignment. To assign more than one person to a task, just click on their name as well. To unassign Carol, we click on her name again, and now only the consultant is assigned. If the planner wants to assign everyone to this task, clicking on the All button here in the upper right-hand portion of the screen is a shortcut for accomplishing that. Here is a task to review tutorials for interest and attention. This will require a new resource, some Project Kickstart testers, but they're not listed here. To add them, all we need to do is click here on New Person, add the testers, and assign them. People are the usual resources assigned to tasks, but non-personnel resources like materials, equipment, or special lab work can be added and assigned to tasks just like any other resource. Now here's the fastest way to assign people to tasks. The consultant will be responsible for most of these tasks, so it would be helpful if we didn't need to assign him one task at a time. Instead, we can hold down the control key and select multiple tasks just as we would in most Windows programs. And now clicking on the consultant assigns him to all these tasks. This technique makes it easy to assign any resources to any task, and assigning resources to Project Kickstart can often be done in less than 60 seconds. Now, clicking on Next moves to the task screen, where the plan has all the tasks and assigned resources required to organize the plan. Here in the task step, we see an icons toolbar specifically for organizing tasks. Let's take a closer look at the first seven of these icons. The up arrow moves any task or any phase and its tasks up the task list. The down arrow moves tasks or phases down the list. The right arrow promotes a subtask to a task. The left arrow does the opposite. It demotes a task to a subtask. This insert icon is for adding a new task, and the subtask icon is for adding a new subtask under an existing task. Clicking this X will delete a task. Here's an example of reorganizing tasks to improve readability by keeping early tasks at the top of the list and later ones near the end. The Acquire Consulting Support phase and the four subtasks within it need to appear at the beginning of this plan. Highlighting the phase and then clicking the up arrow moves the phase and the task within it to the top of the list where they belong. Here's how to make a task list easy to read by keeping like tasks together. Here we see create an outline of the tutorial topics. Then there are these three tasks about evaluating software, followed by two more tasks about the tutorial topic outlines. Create an outline of the tutorial topics can be moved down one, two, three times to join three like tasks together. Adding tasks that might have been overlooked and creating tasks with subtasks will also improve the plan. Here are three tasks related to evaluating tutorial development software. This plan indicates that we will evaluate software product A, then software product B, and then software product C. But in this case, all three products can actually be evaluated together. Here's how this can be made clear. First, we can use the Add a Task icon to create a new task called Evaluate Tutorial Development Software. Then we can highlight the original three evaluation tasks and use the indent arrow to make them into subtasks. 
Now the three separate but concurrent evaluations are clearly subtasks of an overtask called Evaluate Tutorial Development Software. Now here's a planning tip. It can be tempting to continue to break tasks into subtasks and subtasks down into sub-subtasks, but this is not necessarily a good planning practice because project plans work well as guidelines, not as micromanagement tools. As a rule of thumb, 95% of planned tasks should be between one day and three weeks in duration. If a task is shorter than a day, it is usually an event or milestone. If a task requires more than three weeks, it's a good candidate to be a phase or to become a task with subtasks. Now let's see how to edit and enhance individual tasks. Correcting spelling mistakes is one popular edit in the task step. Project Kickstart Spell Checker can be activated with this icon. More importantly, the planner can edit and enhance tasks in the Task Information box, which can be accessed by either of these two icons. The Task Information box has three tabs. Here in the General tab is where to edit the task name. There's also an option to enter the task cost estimate and once the project is underway, the task percent complete can be monitored here. Here in the Assignments tab, the task name can also be edited and people can be added or removed from the task. Here, in the Notes and Attachments tab, the planner can add any note to a task. In Create More Tutorials, it might be a good time to add a reminder about the objective to limit the length of these tutorials. It might also be helpful to add to the website folder where these completed tutorials will be stored. Click OK and the note shows up here along with an icon to indicate that there's an attachment. We've seen how to assign people to tasks in the Assign step and learned several ideas for optimizing tasks in the Task step. Think of the task step as a helpful bridge between the planning wizard and the Gantt chart, which will be described in the next tutorial.